This week in the business of tech, we have a look at recession possibility, which could be a coin flip, while Gardner updates their IT spend and, more importantly, consulting services predictions. Microsoft launches Azure OpenAI, while Pia, HPE, QuickPass, TD Cinex, and Apple make strategic moves in automation, AI, cybersecurity, and SMB services. The four-day work week results are coming in, and it's all good news. While TechIsle survey data showcases a possible move away from hybrid work, and I'm skeptical. Plus, a shift in tactic of ransomware operators, Amazon's new logistics, and cheating overtime pay. All these stories and more. Hit those like, subscribe, and the notification button, and help us pay the bills. And here are this week's stories. I'll start this segment with the Axios headline I've been pondering. No one knows anything. Why? Well, it turns out no one knows what's coming. The probability of a recession in 2023 is between 45% and 55% per the authors of a Goldman Sachs Investment Strategy Group report released on January 13th. You know, a coin flip. Trend-wise, it's the highest since the prediction started over a decade ago. The good news is that the group thinks that if a recession does come, it will be mild. Inflation is coming down, per the data released last week. Price increases are rising at a more moderate pace, and some prices are declining. In the final three months of 2022, core inflation, which excludes food and fuel costs, came in at an annualized 3.1%, higher than the Fed aims for, but not a crisis level. In the second quarter of the year, that number was 7.9%. There are expected corresponding adjustments from the Fed, expecting to raise interest rates by only a quarter percentage point at the next policy meeting. Why do we care? Despite personally being obsessed with trends news like this, my recommendation is about focus. Stay focused on your own performance. I'm self-aware enough to know that the interesting story is about turbulence. The story actually appears to be more about stabilizing to what many economists view as more normal. Free money, that idea of capital being available at nearly no cost, is not normal, even though it's been the state of affairs for a considerable amount of time. The exceptionally low rates were the exception, not the norm. This is a small one, but I didn't want to let it slip by. Amazon is opening its Buy with Prime program up, allowing eligible U.S. merchants to offer its Prime logistics services without having to sell on Amazon. Sellers who sign up pay Amazon to store and deliver their products and process customer payments. People who pay for Amazon Prime can get free shipping and next-day delivery from more places that want to keep selling or only sell through their own websites. It's logistics as a service. Why do we care? My spidey sense tells me that this is useful to some listeners. Can you help your customers leverage this? I'd love to hear about it. Logistics as a service. Here's the insight. Amazon's capability to turn an expense line item into a profit center is exceptional. Need all that variable computing power? Find a way to resell it. That's AWS. And here, need a logistics operation to run your own? Find a way to resell it making money off a cost center. Ransomware operators are streamlining their businesses. Some are no longer locking up the target systems via encryption and instead steal the data before locking the organization out and then demanding a second payment to stop it from leaking online. Lockbit, for example, is urging members to stop using encryption in attacks on critical infrastructure and have a rule to ban the tactic. The operators have learned that they can get paid the same amount for half the work. Here's the latest landscape data from the 2022 Thales Cloud Security Study. Organizations run an average of six different tools or features to secure their public cloud environments, and 96% of decision makers still report that their organizations face security incidents in the last 12 months. 45% of businesses have experienced a cloud-based data breach or failed audit over the past year. Between 2020 and 2021, ransomware-related data leaks and interactive intrusion campaigns increased by 45%. 
Also happening last week, a series of meetings at the UN, which is working on a new international cybercrime treaty. The goal is a treaty designed to frame new laws around the world. Why do we care? The change in tactics by ransomware operators feels prescient. While I don't believe it changes defenders' tactics, it changes the risk calculus business owners apply. We're not defending against downtime and instead protecting against data exposure. The new strategy to consider is having less data online. You can't be extorted for data you didn't collect. Hoovering up everything you can is far riskier now than ever, and there's high value in helping customers ensure they are only keeping what they need to, which minimizes risk. Shopify recently outlined a new communication standard for employees. The company is clearing employee calendars of all recurring meetings with more than three people and restricting all meetings to Wednesdays. Staff is also encouraged to decline or remove themselves from meetings. The result is expected to remove nearly 10,000 events, which equates to more than 76,000 hours of meetings. Microsoft's U.S. employees are getting unlimited time off. In a leaked memo seen by The Verge, Microsoft is calling its unlimited time off discretionary time off, and it will apply to all salaried U.S. employees. The changes started on January 16th and mean even new Microsoft employees no longer need to wait to accrue vacation time. Microsoft will offer 10 corporate holidays, leaves of absences, sick and mental health time off, and time away for jury duty or bereavement alongside this new unlimited time off policy. Employees with unused vacation balances will get a one-time payout in April. And what's the data say? According to the CIPD's Resourcing and Talent Planning Report 2022, 68% of organizations that offer hybrid and remote working reported that it has allowed them to attract and retain more talent. A recent study by Muse found that out of 2,500 people surveyed, 72% experienced surprise or regret after starting their new role, suggesting their expectations of the role weren't met. The total number of remote tech positions is falling, according to the latest job report from CompTIA, based on data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and Lightcast, which collects and analyzes millions of job postings across the U.S. The data represented is raw numeric drops, more positions in November than in December. For example, December listed 6,780 remote IT support specialist roles, down 950 from November. On the security front, the global cybersecurity workforce grew to encompass 4.7 million people, reaching its highest ever levels, according to ISC 2022 workforce study. That study also found that there's still a need for more than 3.4 million security professionals, an increase of over 26% from 2021. This reverses a trend in the 2021 study, where the number of open cybersecurity jobs dropped over two years. Why do we care? Employers continue to tweak how the world of work looks, and here are two trends playing out. Let's address the idea of unlimited time off. While seemingly entirely good for employees, let's note it also takes the liability for vacation time off a company's books, and without the culture change that encourages the use of time off, it's possible lip service. That isn't necessarily what's happening at Microsoft. Let's observe that as benefits go, it's not as clear cut as one might think. Employee hiring and retention remain a priority, so here's the data on what's happening. Does coordinating meetings and help desk calls frustrate you and your clients? Wouldn't it be easier if you could automate this process and it integrated with ConnectWise Manage or Autotask? TimeZest is scheduling automation that gives you control of your schedule and removes the frustration of calendar ping pong. As the only solution specifically designed for MSPs, it integrates with your PSA to schedule appointments right in your workflow. And the best part? You can try it for free. Visit timezest.com slash MSP Radio and mention MSP Radio for 10% off your first year of Timezest. 
Pia, based in Australia, has announced AI Desk, an automation platform that integrates into a long list of existing ITSM platforms, including Autotask and ConnectWise. Promising to deliver automated ticket resolution, the platform launches with more than 100 automations and integrations. HPE is buying a startup that delivers software to automate reproducible machine learning pipelines that target large-scale artificial intelligence applications. And while I'm talking about vendor moves, QuickPass is launching peer groups and their own trade show this year. TD Cynix launched its Cybersecurity Ecosystems Initiative, designed to increase the interaction between security experts. It will be leaning on its own security practice, sharing the educational tools and experiences it's picked up providing security as a service over the past few years. And in one for SMB owners, Apple is now allowing businesses to claim and edit their listings across Apple services, which includes Apple Maps. The new Business Connect tool lets owners fill out their listings by adding header images and other photos to their place cards, which appears on Maps, Messages, Wallet, Siri, and other apps. There's a list of additional options, including Showcases, which allows offers, discounts, and seasonal menus. Why do we care? Two stories about AI hitting the channel. It's too early to make the call on the importance. Instead, we're tracking to see what happens. There are also a lot of tactical items here. I'll be dipping more into these moves at a rapid clip, so pick and choose as you require. The chat GPT buzz continues to grow as Microsoft has announced the general availability of its Azure OpenAI service, an offering related to its $1 billion investment in OpenAI, the maker of chat GPT. That means more businesses can apply to use OpenAI's Azure hosted and trained large language models, such as GPT 3.5, the brains behind ChatGPT, Dolly 2, the AI that generates images from casual descriptions, and Codex, the GPT-3-based foundation of GitHub's Copilot AI paired programming service. The company has also indicated it will add ChatGPT itself to Azure soon. Microsoft uses its Azure OpenAI service to power GitHub Copilot, the $10 per month service that helps suggest lines of code to developers inside their code editor. And let's look at the MIT Technology Review, which has an article on how Microsoft might leverage more OpenAI products. How might that play out? Search is the obvious first answer, then infusions of AI to products like Outlook and Office. Quote, Language models could be integrated into Word to make it easier for people to summarize reports, write proposals, or generate ideas. They could also give email programs in Word better autocomplete tools. And it's not just all Word-based. Microsoft has already said it will use OpenAI's text-to-image generator DALI to create images for PowerPoint presentations, too. Why do we care? Even if providers never sell ChatGPT or an AI directly, Microsoft's moves should give pause. Training on how to be effective with these tools and how to use them in a way that not only impacts the business, but also retains the core value of the IP of the organization is going to be the name of the game. Providers should be considering these implications now because with the speed of product development, they'll be widespread faster than you can spell AI. TechIsle has released survey data that they believe indicates a move away from hybrid work. Quote, By the end of 2023, 32% of employees within the SMB and mid-market firms expect to have hybrid work arrangements, down from 58% in 2021 and similar to 29% in 2019, which is pre-pandemic levels. Over 40% of SMBs and upper mid-market firms are experiencing significant challenges impacting remote employees' productivity. In addition, 39% of SMBs and 41% of upper mid-market firms have critical security concerns relative to remote and hybrid work. Furthermore, 43% of businesses cannot adequately support remote employees, and 39% cannot provide consistent technology experience for remote and on-site employees. Finally, 41% of SMBs and upper mid-market firms have not overcome organizational challenges in managing those remote employees. 
TechIle data shows that senior management is spending three times more time maintaining company culture through the hybrid organization, 2.5 times more time in employee empathy, and two times more time in supervision and management. As a result, 62% of SMBs and 68% of upper mid-market firms plan to return all employees to the office in 2023. However, bringing the employees back to the office is also of concern to the executive management. As a result, 37% of SMBs are prioritizing office space planning, and 32% are identifying wayfinding technologies. In addition, 41% of upper mid-market firms are investigating ID management, and 40% are investigating smart meeting rooms. Why do we care? There's a big if in this survey. Despite the irrelevant noise about tech layoffs, available new hires are scarce. That means employers don't have the leverage to declare absolutes. So returning to the office is irrelevant if an organizational still has to hire remote workers. Those remote workers will need to be supported to be effective. And so those multipliers of maintenance won't be reduced unless eliminated, which isn't possible. So if you're investing, why not fully gain the benefits? We'll see how this plays out. I'm skeptical that this genie is going back in the bottle. And in further updates to my 2023 predictions, the results are in from a four-day workweek global study. The results? It's better for everyone. Quoting Insider, The real-world experiment sought to see whether the employees could be just as productive in 80% of the time, all for the same pay. The results were overwhelmingly positive. Companies in the program reported increased revenue and improved employee health and well-being and had a positive impact on the environment. And after the success, a hundred more companies that together employ thousands of people are considering or already implementing the same approach. Why do we care? There's untapped potential here, and this movement, while still small, is gaining data and supporters. How long until my prediction of a big player moving to the model? We'll see, but the shift from early adopter to mainstream may not be that far off. Smaller organizations can be more nimble now and consider it, or wait until after it becomes normalized. Let's go right to the Wall Street Journal. Quote, Global IT spending contracted 0.2% in 2022, dropping to $4.38 trillion, a rare instance of corporations spending less on digital business tools than in the previous year, according to IT consulting and research firm Gartner. Gardner had initially estimated that IT spending had increased 0.8% last year. The firm now expects spending to increase 2.4% this year, less than half the rate of its previous estimate in October, as economic uncertainties continue to rattle markets, Gardner said in a report Wednesday. Spending on business software and IT services is expected to remain steady year over year, together accounting for more than $2.16 trillion in projected spending in 2023. Within IT services, spending on consulting services alone is projected to reach $264 billion, up 6.7% from 2022. And new related data from IDC. Quote, spending on compute and storage infrastructure products for cloud deployments, including dedicated and shared IT environments, increased 24.7% year-over-year in the third quarter of 2022 to $23.9 billion. Spending on cloud infrastructure continues to outgrow the non-cloud segment, although the latter had strong growth in the third quarter of 22 as well, increasing at 16.5% year-over-year to $16.8 billion. The market continues to benefit from high demand and large backlogs, coupled with an improving infrastructure supply chain. Spending on shared cloud infrastructure reached $16.8 billion in the quarter, increasing 24.4% compared to a year ago. IDC expects to see continuous strong demand for shared cloud infrastructure, with spending expected to surpass non-cloud infrastructure in 2023. The dedicated cloud infrastructure segment grew 25.3% year-over-year in the third quarter to $7.1 billion. Of the total dedicated cloud infrastructure, 45.2% was deployed on customer premises. Why do we care? 
well, the turbulence begins. One perspective would be that the turbulence is in the predictions rather than the actual implementation. The market will move along some wavy line. It's the predictions that may be far more variable. Within the Gardner prediction, note that IT services will be steady and consulting alone is increasing. That's positive. And why I also noted the IDC data, the cloud is going up. So cloud plus consulting seems like a winning combination to me. So are titles effective compensation? A new study looked into this and found it may be an exploitation of federal labor laws. Let's quote Vice and excuse the language in advance. But today, many such workers are managers in name only, and the national threshold is only $455 a week, or under $24,000 a year. Cohen and his fellow researchers scoured job listings in the 2010s and discovered that right above that weekly $455 threshold, there was a 485% increase in the number of salaried positions with fancy-sounding managerial titles. We were shocked at the magnitude, said Cohen. The researchers found no such jumps in that threshold among workers who were paid hourly and hence would still be owed overtime. Nor did the pattern persist at that particular $455 threshold in states like New York and California, which have set higher overtime thresholds. To the researchers, it appeared that there was a systematic issue at play. Companies, it seemed, were often doling out fancy-sounding titles to salaried employees and then paying them just enough to legally shirk overtime rules. We found widespread evidence of firms appearing to avoid paying overtime wages by exploiting a federal law, the researchers said in their paper, which was recently published as a working paper by the National Bureau of Economic Research. On average, the strategy appears to save companies significant amounts of money and cost workers just as much. The researchers estimates that firms pocket 13.5% in overtime payments for each bullshit manager title they hand out. Why do we care? Well, two perspectives. Employees took titles rather than pay, or employers issued titles rather than pay. If an employee knew it was a choice, more pay or a title, which would they pick? Let's assume positive intent on the part of employers. With the new salary transparency movement occurring, this tactic will likely lose much of its effectiveness going forward. Regardless of the why or how of the situation, employers won't want to be caught with this reality in the future. This is less likely of concern for those in IT services, yet undoubtedly possible with some entry-level positions. Be forewarned. Thanks for watching this week in the business of tech. If you like this video, you can let me know with a like of the video and even more valuable, hitting the subscription button. My content is all free and I use metrics like subscriptions to pay the bills, so it has real value. The content here is produced under ethics guidelines posted at businessof.tech. If you're interested in more content like this, you can get access to content early via our Patreon at patreon.com slash MSP radio. It's our give what you want model where you set the value of what you think the content is worth. If you like this show, you can catch it daily as the five minute news and commentary podcast, The Business of Tech, available on all your favorite podcatchers with links at businessof.tech. Just hit that big blue subscribe button. Again, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen, and I really value the interaction. If you want to say something in the comments, I do respond and watch all of them, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you.